All right, traders, we have a lot to go over. I'm going to be doing an in-depth price action analysis on the following stocks. Apple, AMC, Amazon, Dwack, Ford, Coca-Cola, MU, Netflix, Proke, Shopify, SoFi, and Tesla. I'm going to be doing an in-depth price action analysis, walking you through when to be bullish, when to be bearish, when to buy the call options, when to buy the put options. This video is going to give you a much better understanding on how to take advantage of these day trading opportunities and also prepare you for upcoming swing trading opportunities right so i'm gonna show you how you can trade these both ways it is going to be an absolutely insane wild week once again guys get ready let's get right into the price action analysis i'm also going to be recapping my big green day that i had on friday that's going to be recapped towards the end of this video so let's get right into it so in terms of the spy right this was a classic bull trap where you know the bulls just got screwed and with that being said there is no way from a macro point of view that this is the bottom obviously for the short term it's due for some sort of spike some sort of bounce um but the best thing that i told you guys you know in all these previous videos that i've been telling you guys what you want to do is in terms of the spy the best way to really play it on the put side is to focus on it when it has these um, massive gap downs. You know, when you see SPY having these massive gap downs, the best entry in terms of like a day trade and like a short term swing trade would be to focus on buying put options when you see it retrace back up to the previous closing price. So like, for example, on, um, you know, Friday, this had a nice gap down and then it had a nice morning panic, right? This went from 447 to 440, right? That's what you want to see. You want to see a gap down. You want to see a morning panic. And if you see a quick rip up like this, and then you start to see this blue line, this previous closing price react as a resistance, react as a resistance, react as a resistance. You're going to want to buy some put options and ride this back down. So just understand in terms of the market from a macro point of view, things are overall bearish. So you want to focus on, you know, when SPY is gapping down, when it's having a morning panic and it rips back up to the previous closing price, you're going to want to focus on looking for put options towards the key resistance levels right so that's what i would recommend in terms of spy now in terms of the updated price action analysis um things are getting pretty interesting here so this is what i wanted to point out um let's get into this you know we have key support we have a key gap fill reversal level right here at 435.18 as of now the gap has not been filled it has partially filled um futures are currently up during extended hours this did this did downtrend to 436.45. Um, with that being said, what we can potentially see is a partial gap close reversal, where SPY trades around this key gap fill, this key support level, and it bounces back up. So the main thing that I want you to understand right now is there's a gap to fill above, and this gap to fill above is at 437.98. We can round it to 438. So there's a gap to fill right here at 438. You could see it's already reacting as a resistance already breaking down so heading into tomorrow the main thing i want you to understand is if you see 438 react as a resistance level it is very very bearish that's another gap close reversal it's going to be a hard sell-off and then it's really going to start to get crushed and fill that gap below towards 435 and most likely go a little lower now if you see this break above this 438 level and turn it into support spy is going to have a nice rip a nice bounce so that's what you're going to want to look for in terms of tomorrow study how it reacts towards 438 if it reacts bearish you can look to get some push puts for a day trade if it reacts you know bullish you can look to scalp it um but in terms of call options the best way to play kind of calls in the market sentiment right now would be on the morning panic so if you see SPY have a morning panic and then it gets to this gap fill zone at 435 very, very quickly in the morning and you see it reacting bullish, you see it reacting as support, then you could pick up a short term call option for a quick day trade, ride it out for like 30 minutes to an hour and flip that real quick, right? So that's really what I would focus in terms of the call side. Um, you know, when it gaps down, morning panic and then they tend to reverse around 10 a.m and then they like to shoot back up start to fill the gap above then you can play puts once the gap fills above right so just study this kind of pattern this chart right here this is what you're going to want to focus on heading into tomorrow right so if you see it react as a resistance see it react as a resistance 438 you could look to grab the puts 
um, if you see 435 break down, react to support, you could look to grab some calls for a short term trade. I just want you to understand from a macro point of view, the market is overall bearish. So in terms of swing trades right now, swing trades are mainly focused on puts. There has been no reason whatsoever in terms of the confirmations that I use in the daily chart and the bullish candlesticks, there's been no reason to buy calls and swing trade them because there's no bullish confirmations on the daily. These stocks have been blowing through these gap fill levels. Um, the strategy has been working still in terms of scalping, but in terms of swing trading, there was no confirmation. That's why I never took any swing trades on the call side because there was no bullish confirmations. So with swing trades, I wait until end of the day for the candlestick to shape itself. So with that being said, let's get into the next um, price action analysis. And in terms of like how high can SPY go if 438 can break out and turn into, you know, turn into support, this can realistically go to like 442 to 443. Um, once you see 438 react as a resistance, 435 would be the next level. If it holds, then back to 438. If it cracks, then like 432 would be the next level. So the next stock is going to be on Apple. In terms of Apple, what we can see is something like this. So I strongly believe that over time, from a macro point of view, Apple is going to go back down to fill this gap at 156.80. So there is some sort of swing trading setting up for puts. Um, with that being said, we could see a small little bounce towards this key gap fill level at 160.184. So in terms of Apple, if this can crack 160.184, it's going to be on its way to fill this gap below. If it holds, it's going to start to reversing. But then overall, at some point, it'll really start to get crushed most likely towards like 166 to 167. Then it could really start to fill the gap below. That's kind of what I'm looking for on that one. Um, but I'm mainly kind of trying to focus on stocks that have been sitting towards all time highs while the market has been getting crushed. And these stocks are kind of just like a delayed reaction, like they're due for a pullback. So perfect example, um, like what I did on Ford puts, you know, I was buying the Ford leap options i told you guys i was bearish on the overall macro point of view on the market so i wanted to swing trade with some size on puts and i went with ford i didn't go with spy because spy was towards key support on the daily um but with that being said you know these absolutely printed these um ford leaps i bought these on january 12th at a dollar and 84 cents you guys know i was well aware of the bull trap so i went with ford that was my big play um and then i took some profits and then i'm still holding 30 you know 34 percent of the position left um but with that being said you know i kind of like to focus towards key resistance right so ford was towards key resistance right here on january 12th the day before the all-time high which is where i bought you know my leap put options um and it's been downhill ever since pretty much for the most part um so in terms of our next potential play and i also called out mu i didn't trade it but i had a lot of people make money on this one as well mu with the key resistance same pattern as ford to fill the gaps below we're going to go over that here soon but i'm thinking coca-cola could be the next one where you're going to want to pick up some midterm put options so in terms of where i see this you know this is setting up for a crash um we're definitely on track for 59 dollars and 30 cents and then if that can crack and turn into resistance over time, it's going to take some time. We'll be on track for 56.30. You know, um, Coca-Cola, this is sitting towards um, major resistance where this went from the 60s all the way down to the 30s. It's due for some sort of pullback, especially with the way the market has been. And it's consistently failing to break out towards all time highs. So when you see a stock consistently fail to break out with all-time highs and history has shown, you know, it has huge downside potential, um, you know, like for example, um, MU, that's like a perfect example in terms of that pattern. You could see right here, previous all-time highs, failed to break out multiple times, gets crushed. Now it's retesting, getting crushed again. History repeats itself, right? So I think we're going to see something um, similar with Coca-Cola, just not as big and quick as a crash. With that being said, we're definitely heading to fill this gap at 59.30. If that reacts to support, you're looking at a short-term bounce back to 59.80. If that cracks and reacts as a resistance from an overall point of view, very, very bearish on the macro once that occurs. And within time, you're looking at 56.28. So I would start looking into some midterm put options on Ford. I mean, on Coca-Cola, I would really start looking in terms of like time length. Um, I would give yourself until like March 18th, that would be more than enough time. That's what I would be looking at in terms of Coca-Cola stock. March 18th puts, stay stay at the money or in the money. Don't go too far out of the money. But with that being said, those should do very, very well, guys. I'm liking that. I'm planning to pick those up 
um, heading into Monday morning. That's going to be my next leap play, most likely. Um, DWAC, DWAC stock, I'm becoming very, very bearish on this one. Um, in terms of my squeeze indicator right here, we just got the first blue bar, which basically indicates when the squeeze is over for the time being. So, you know, we called this out on puts. I had plenty of members bank, the, bank on this one when I called this out on puts when it was in the um, mid 80s. With that being said, you know, in terms of DWAC, this is going to fill the gap at $70.88. Once it fills the gap for the short term, it could have a little bit of spike. Um, but overall, when we turn 70, 88 into resistance, it cracks, it turns into resistance. This stock within some time, so you're looking at more of like a midterm put, more of something like a couple weeks. Um, you can also consider even further. You're looking at a pullback to $60 once this can crack 70 and turn it into a resistance. Keep in mind, the spreads tend to be wide on this one, so that's something to keep in mind. But overall, from a macro point of view, this is definitely going back to 60s and um, most likely even lower than 60s. You know, you have this gap to fill right here at 43. And within time, I strongly believe that gap's going to fill. So in terms of DWAC, you can definitely consider something like a longer term put as well. Um, I definitely see this heading to 43 within time. It can take like two to three months. Um, you know, of course it's going to have some short term spikes along the way, but that's overall where I see the stock heading is just fading back within time. So in terms of MU, MU is at a key critical support level. So what you can do on this one is when you see $82, this key gap, the level also you have key support at like 81. When you see this overall zone crack and turn into resistance, you're going to want to ride some puts and this will head back down to $77. So keep that in mind, guys. Look for a key breakdown on MU stock once it cracks and turns that into resistance. Things are going to get very ugly. From a macro point of view, this will go much lower. So this is one of those, again, passive income plays like um, we talked about with Ford, like with KO, where you can kind of just hold some midterm put options out and take some profit along the way when they hit their key support. But over time, this one is definitely going much lower. Um, so with that being said, Netflix, Netflix is setting up very, very interesting. You have key support. So let's see, you have a lot of support right here in 370s. Not that support has really mattered much as of lately, um, but you have a lot of support towards 370s and it bounced off that key support. So here's the best thing you could do with Netflix is to kind of focus on the breakout. So this is called a gap breakout for those of you within Trader Society. Make sure you watch the gap breakout video lesson. It's going to teach you the entire strategy. The webinar is over an hour and 20 minutes long. It's going to teach you everything you need to know. Um, but what you're going to want to do is set a price alert at the high of day, $409 towards this level. And what I want you to understand is when Netflix can go above 409 and turn that into support with some strong volume coming in, that's going to be a bullish confirmation to start buying this up and to start buying call options because there's no resistance. Once this breaks above this 409 level, there's no resistance and there's a gap to fill at 508. And you know all these strong blue chip stocks eventually go back up to fill their gaps and they really start to fill once they have their gap breakouts if it has strong volume and ideally a catalyst. So that's something to watch for in terms of the breakout play on Netflix to buy call options once we break above 409 and turn that into support and kind of ride it back up to like 4 420, 430, be realistic with your short term price targets. That will be some profit taking zone. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that one. In the meantime, not interested in doing anything with it other than that. So I'm kind of just on the sidelines as of now. I'll keep a watch on it. Overall, I think it's going to be pretty choppy and go down a little bit lower. Um, but that's going to be a future opportunity. And if you're prepared and you set your price alerts, you'll be able to take advantage of it once we get the confirmation. In terms of PROG stock, for this one, um, very, very simple. The lowest gap to fill is at $1.08. Once we go to $1.08, in terms of a day trading opportunity, we are most likely going to see an instant spike to about 125 to 130 With that being said, in order to swing trade, it has to have a bullish green trend reversal candlestick towards this 108 price level. If we're not getting any bullish green candlesticks, so like for example, there was a gap to fill at 135 and as soon as this filled the gap right here, 135 on the day trade, it instantly spiked. It went to um, it went to literally like 150. Like the strategy worked phenomenal day trading wise. It literally, as soon as it hit the 135, it ripped to 150. So imagine the spike when it goes to 108. It's probably going to rip to 130 plus easily, right? But you could see it didn't close strong. It closed weak at the lows. Therefore, 
you don't buy and hold a swing trade into a bearish candlestick. That's not a bullish confirmation. You need something like this, like a green bullish trend reversal candlestick or a strong green candle towards those key gap the levels. So I just want you to understand, nothing is a swing trade until the end of the day, once the candle has shaped itself. If you see the green bullish candlestick towards the end of the day, you step back in for the swing trade. So when this hits 108, this is nothing to me but a day trade. I'm going to buy it towards 108, get in, get out. It's probably going to spike to 130 plus, get out, lock in profits. And then I'm going to look back towards the end of the day. And if it closes strong, if it closes green, if it has a nice trend reversal candlestick with some volume, then I'm going to rebuy it and swing trade it. So just to understand, like, you know, when we're when we're getting in at a dollar and eight cents, we're going to be getting in towards the lows. And there's a possibility it could close strong, but I'm not going to bet on that possibility. I'm going to lock in my profits as a trade, you know, as a day trade. And then I'm going to check back towards the end of the day and see how it closed. If it closed strong, then I'm going to get back in for the swing trade. So when I'm swing trading, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm expecting my profits to be the next day, not the day I get in. So I'm not looking to be up or down the first day I get in. Um, I'm looking to be up or down the next day, right? So that's how my swing trading strategy works. I use the confirmations. Those are some of the basics to it. I use confirmations, right? You have to trade with the confirmation. It's very hard. Don't try, you know, because we're getting in at such phenomenal entries. Don't try to hold it till the close, hoping that it's going to close strong. Then you could just hold over nine. You'll be up even more the next day. Don't try to do that. If you're going to try to do it, use like a very light size, set some for the swing trade and then set the majority for the day trade. But that is something I don't recommend doing because you'll, in most cases, you'll get back the vast majority of your profits, which will be very disappointing. So just day trade it. And then in terms of swing trading, you get back in if you see the bullish candlestick on the daily forming towards like the last 30 minutes into the close. So that's my thoughts on that one. But I'm telling you, that's going to be a phenomenal day trading opportunity at a dollar and eight cents. So be on the lookout for that should rip to 130. Um, Shopify. This is getting very, very interesting. One of the hardest sell-offs that we've had in the market recently on a strong stock. I mean, it looks like it's down 50% almost from the all-time high very, very quickly. So with that being said, this one's going to be tough to kind of see where the overall bottom is. I'll tell you this, in terms of where we're at, you know, we're looking at something like this where it's still going to go much lower. This definitely is not the bottom, in my opinion. It could have some sort of short-term spike, but overall, this is going to go lower. So the best price you can really buy puts would be towards, um, let's see what it did in after hours. Uh, it didn't do too much in after hours, just a small little gap down. I mean, the best price for puts on this, this would be like a gift to just kind of hold these out as a swing. 1024 that would be the absolute best price for puts on this so as of now just to understand from a macro view this is going to be heading lower in terms of like how much lower i mean we're probably going to see like at least 840 but things can get really ugly so i'm kind of on the sidelines um for this one unless it can spike back towards key resistance i mean from a macro point of view 742 that would be one of your best prices to buy this towards 742 this gap the level here that's where i'd be interested in more of like a macro point of view so i'd be interested in that key level um sofi like i told you guys i was very very bearish on sofi like i told you guys i thought it was going to be this whole bbby situation all over again like i showed you guys the pattern with triple by where it has this resistance channel it gaps up tops out, gets crushed, gaps up, tops out, gets crushed. It looks like SoFi is setting up for, you know, more of a pullback. So this is something you could consider puts on if you haven't gotten already. Um, you could see right here, you have the key resistance and then it sells off very quickly. Key resistance sells off very quickly. So in terms of SoFi, the gap has been filled at 1371. There was a gap fill, like I told you guys, it's gonna fill that gap. Now it's even lower, it's at 1350. So basically for this one, um there's a there's a new gap to fill above since it's gapping down at 1389 1389 is your best price to buy the puts if you see it reacting as resistance say it spikes to 1389 you're going to want to pick up some puts if you see it starting to pull back the price target so you know once 1371 can remain as resistance and cracks your overall price target for this week is going to be 12 dollars and eight cents so this is setting up for a phenomenal put swing where we're looking at more red to come. So that's something I'm keeping an eye on. So far, my current price target is sitting at $12 and 
in six cents by the end of the week for that one. In terms of Tesla stock, Tesla stock is fairly interesting. You guys know I've been waiting for the gap fill right here at 938.53. So in terms of swing trading, there was no bullish confirmation to buy and hold overnight. Um, in terms of day trading, let's see how it reacted at 938.53. So for this one, I didn't play this one. I played AMC. The reason why I didn't play this one is because at the time, SPY was looking very, very bearish. Um, with that being said, this is where the gap was waiting to fill right here. So it had a partial reversal. It bottomed out at $940. So for the micro, it had a partial reversal. It went from 940 all the way to 962. So I mean, the calls definitely printed during that time. It nearly bottomed at the key level. Um, and as of now, it's cracking through. So the deal with Tesla is if we can get an opportunity to buy this at like 938 and we see some support forming at 938, it should push back up to fill the gap at 944. There's a new gap to fill above right here at 944. If that breaks out and turns into support, it's going to really start to run in from a macro view, go back to 1,000. Now, if 944 reacts as a resistance level, it's going to be a hard sell-off, and you're looking at a crash to about $910, which would be the next ideal level. In terms of Tesla, we're most likely going to see some sort of short-term buying opportunity at around 900 to 890 we have to see guys you have to be very very careful with the may with the way the market has been going because tesla is one of those plays that is just extremely inflated and with the way the market is going right now it's just really not ideal to be buying and swing trading these for the current moment in time um but we'll see how it reacts you know we'll see how it kind of reacts down there um in terms of our let's see on um, amazon in terms of amazon stock so there's been no bullish confirmations you know on any of these to swing trade just day trading call opportunities towards key levels um but that being said this is just blowing through your key support i mean there's heavy support right here let's see what this is at so your key heavy support is right here at 2871 so with that being said it's already cracked through that um, so I'm kind of just on the sidelines. Like I said, for a lot of these, if we can get some sort of dead count, dead cap, dead cap bounce back to this key gap, the level at 33, 33, it's going to set up for a potential put. So we'll see. But I'm kind of just on the sidelines, not much of an opinion for the time being. Just kind of want to let the market do its thing right now. Um, in terms of our last one, it is going to be, let's see, it's going to be AMC. So AMC surprisingly. Um, actually closed fairly decent while everything else sold off very, very hard. So you guys are well aware I've been preparing you for the gap close reversal opportunity right here. There was a gap to fill below at $16.41. The low of day was at $16.22. As soon as it cracked through, it ripped back up and turned it into support, had a classic gap close reversal. Um, so in terms of AMC, I bought shares at 1681. And then as soon as I bought shares, I picked up 18 strike calls that expire on January 18th. At one point, those were up 70% on the day. Um, but with that being said, you know, I sold this way too soon for a small for a small win. The reason why I sold this so soon is because it was kind of delayed and following SPY at the time being. And when I was noticing that SPY was turning this previous closing price into resistance, and you guys remember I told you in my previous video that I made on the stock market analysis, if you see SPY gap down, morning panic, that's going to be an opportunity to buy the dip. But then if you see it rip back up and go back to the previous closing price, this blue line forms resistance, that's the opportunity to buy the puts and be bearish. So I was looking at the SPY door in this time, and I had recognized that it just doesn't add up to really be an AMC. So basically SPY shook me out of my AMC play. Um, but with that being said, you know, history did prove that, you know, because AMC has been fairly following the market when it goes down. So that was one of the main reasons that shook me out. Um, so it was just a small win. But history has shown whenever AMC fills these gaps, no matter what, it likes to have reversals. You know, it filled a gap right here at 3204, had a reversal shot up, filled a gap right here at 26, as soon as it hit 26 right here, shot up to 34 a couple days later. And we are now at that gap fill zone at 1641. Um, so in terms of AMC, it's kind of just doing its own thing. And you'll see stocks kind of do their own thing and kind of go away from SPY when they're at such key oversold levels at times. 
So for this one, we are currently down in after hours. So for the bulls to really take control for a potential swing trade opportunity, um, this would really have to break above 1807 and turn that into support. If that can happen, we're going to be on track for a run to about $20 in a couple days. Um, so right now there's a gap to fill at 1807. If it reacts as a resistance, it's bearish. It goes back to 1641. If it's bullish and reacts as support, it goes to $20. So that's kind of the main price action that you have to understand about AMC. It's gapping down. Um, there's a gap to fill at 1807. If it reacts as a resistance, that's bearish. Overall target would be 1640. If it pushes above, reacts as support, overall target would be $20. But that those targets will take uh, some days. Those targets are going to take days. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts. That's the analysis on AMC, kind of just on the sidelines a little bit. I mean, it almost closed green, and this is somewhat of a decent candle. But still, this is still bearish from a macro point of view. Um, so yeah, now I'm just going to quickly recap my trades. So in terms of the trades that I made on Friday, so, you know, we had the killer leap option play with the forward puts, um, in terms of the trades I made on Friday, it was three wins, um, two very, very small wins that on AMC, I sold very, very soon on spy. I sold perfectly literally towards the top Netflix. Um, I sold 66% of the position too soon. And then I sold the rest, the other 34%. Um, literally towards the top. So with that being said, um, I'll just quickly show you. So, you know, 10, 10.30 a.m., um, I bought the AMC calls right before that. I bought at 16.81. Um, so I basically got shook out of SPY, you know, like I said. So I also picked up Netflix calls at 10.50 a.m. The reason why I picked up those Netflix calls, it wasn't following the SPY at the time. It was kind of just doing its own thing. Extremely oversold due for some sort of bounce. There was a lot of support in the 380s on the daily and it just had this massive gap down so it's due for some sort of spike and then i also have kind of like a like a photogenic like a photographic memory um when it comes to certain patterns so i just recognized this certain pattern where google recently had like the same move this certain pattern right here in terms of the consolidation and the bounce that netflix was having really caused me to um buy it it was just one of those plays where it was like a gut feeling and like just a photogenic memory of what happened to google when it had this massive gap down it formed that same pattern um so in terms of the price action it really aligned to a nice previous play on google so i went with it and as soon as i got in it just really started to explode basically once i saw that you know so i got in on this at 1050 so 1050 so right so right here at 1050, once I saw that it was just bouncing in between this channel, just kind of sitting here trying to push up, and then I got some squeeze alerts triggered as well, I had to get it on this play. Um, and then I wrote it up fairly nicely, so you could see in terms of the exits, the exits were on um, Netflix. You know, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, do, do. Where is the exits? So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't following SPY at the time. Um, so I sold the rest at 16. I bought the contracts at $9 and 45 cents. That was a 68% win. I literally sold towards the peak. Um, and then I had the rest of the exits in, in between here. You could see as well. So sold two thirds, 67% of the position at $12 and 40 cents, nearly a 30% win. And then in terms of spy, check this out. So in terms of spy, I was trying to play the morning panic. I just chased a little bit. Remember how I told you guys, if you see it gap down, it's extremely oversold. And then it has a morning panic. Look to buy calls at around 9.50 a.m. Um, remember, I told you to do that with the AMC gap fill. I told you to do it with the Ford gap fill. Ford did very well as well. Look at this. This is where the gap was waiting to fill on Ford. Remember that day trading opportunity I gave you guys in that previous video right here at 20.70.70 on Ford. I told you guys once this hits 20.70.70, you see it react to support. How do you know it reacts to support? Right here, it pushes up, has a pullback, turns it into support, and then it breaks out. So your buy zone right here in the 2080s, right around here on this higher support. And then you ride that back up. It went all the way to 2040. Guys, those those Friday, those Friday weeklies that expired that day, those printed in like 20 minutes could have made a quick 100% plus. Um, so that was phenomenal. But yeah, like I was talking about in terms of SPY. So in terms of SPY, um, you can see this is, you know, futures, this is ripping up right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to look to see how this is towards 447 tomorrow. That's where I kind of want to see 447. 
Um, with that being said, in terms of the SPY, you know, I picked up call options towards 11.05. So let's see towards 11.05, 11.05. So right, so right here, why did I pick up the call options right here? Because at the time it turned previous resistance into support, it was trying its best to turn the previous closing price into support for a run to potentially 450. We did get a short term move up where I was up 9% at the peak on the calls. But then in terms of my exit, I exited at the perfect time. Um, you could see right here in terms of my exit, you know, I got out at 560. I was in at 550. It was a small one. Why did I exit very quickly after entering? I exited, I remember literally right here, I exited because it kept forming lower highs. It had its breakout, started breaking down, lower highs. Had another breakdown, going from green to red, very, very bearish, lower highs. So when I see the lower high, lower high, lower high forming and the green to red move, plus on the squeeze, it was dark blue. That's my confirmation to get out. And also, like I told you guys, um, this is key resistance, right? And it's a key gap close reversal level. So if it reacts as a resistance level, that's bearish. And then it's gonna go back down and try to get new lows. So I got out of my calls for a very, very small win. Um, and I didn't play puts at the time because I was focused on Netflix and AMC after that. But with that being said, if you see that, you know, and some of you guys saw it and you did very, very well on the put options, if you see it at that previous closing price and it's breaking down, forming a lot of resistance, you get the puts like the pre-market told you heavy resistance, heavy resistance. If it fails to break out, if it forms lower highs, if it goes to green and red, you're going to want to buy the puts. So I sold that very, very quickly. So my strategy told me exactly when to get out. Um, the main thing that I did wrong on that was not buying the morning panic, not buying the dip. I chased it on the upside, still at a small win, but that's not the point. I should have been more focused on a play like Ford instead of um, SPY at the time being in terms of the call side. In terms of SPY, I should have been focused on the put side. So that was a mistake on my part. Um, and then AMC, like I said, it was just a small win, you know, sold at 1701 and then I made like a five, six percent return on the calls, sold way too soon. The problem with AMC was SPY shook me out. It's as simple as that. But overall, I went three for three on the day and my average win, if you combine everything together on Netflix was 40%. So it was a green day and it was a nice comeback compared to um, my red day on Thursday. So yeah, and um, guys, members have been absolutely killing it. Let's have a great week. You guys crushed it um, on the puts. So many of you guys crushed it on the puts. You saw the opportunities, you saw the plays. Um, we've got people really crushing it within Trader Society. Like I see it, look at the Ford free runners hit 500% um like it's just crazy what you can do with, small, with the small smaller account on options um a firm like it's it's been ridiculous in some of the results you have you guys have been getting so yeah i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow live at market open um for spy at this point you know i'm mainly just focused on since it's gapping up um mainly focused on seeing how it reacts towards 447 tomorrow for a potential put opportunity if you can get the 447 with with a tight stop 447 448 around there that's going to be good um but yeah guys like i told you focus on the previous closing price focus at the key resistance right now spies having a little squeeze so this is setting up for another great macro put opportunity we just got to be patient wait for confirmation give it some time i will see you guys tomorrow live at market open if you do want to be a part of trader society you get access to live trading sessions every single day at market open you also get access to um one-on-one -on -one direct messaging within the chat room um you also get access to the chat room you also get access to the video lesson library the full education suite where you get access to you know trading strategies risk management and psychology there's so much more to it if you want to check it out it's the first link in the description you could trade live with me as soon as the market opens tomorrow i will see you guys till then